Hello, and welcome to a short review of the Hobby LSWR Terrier. I will say, this is not the engine I set out to review. I bought a number of items from Hattons recently, including that Terrier, though I originally wanted to do this uh, P-Class. Though if you see my newest YouTube short, you'll probably know that it hasn't exactly gone, gone well. It, it, it didn't work, I'm going to send it back. Hopefully they'll either refund me or repair it or something, I don't know. It's in the standard Hornby Railways box, and this is very exciting for me because this is the first time I've reviewed sort of a brand new model the day I got it. Uh, locos that I've owned sort of since they were new, um, you know, I've, I've sort of done videos on them in the past. Then there have been sort of second-hand locos that I reviewed the day I they got, got them in, in the, off the post. But this is the first time, this is brand new, and it's the day I got it, so I'm really excited. It's just in the block of ice packaging that, you know, you get on like the Hornby Pug I reviewed, and all sort of Hornby sort of modern locos. I heard something about the scale being off on the original Terriers. And yeah, now that I've got the new sort of super detailed terrier next to it, it's very obvious. I think the original one, which is the Brighton Works, I think it's, yeah, it's too tall and I think it's a bit too short. So, yeah. But I say, in fact, the buffers, sort of the raised buffer beams don't even look right now because they were always too high. I, I still love it, I was about to say. Yeah, the original terrier was sort of a weird hodgepodge between sort of A1 and A1X version. This The one I've got, at least, is just the A1 version. The LSWR livery is what I like to call Rip Your Face Off Green. So, yeah. This Terrier was originally called Clapham, and it was put on the duplicate list in 1901, and it worked on the Lime Regis branch for a sort of while before it got replaced. On, I think it was the O2s and the Adams radial tanks. And it then, after that, uh, it just ended up shunting out the LSWR. Then it was all absorbed into the Southern, and then it was broken up for scrap in 1936, so it didn't even reach British Railways ownership. The paintwork details are exquisite. The brake rigging is also a lot finer on this model. The boiler and side tanks are covered in sort of pipework and riveting detail and the handrails. It's a really, really good loco, and it's a lot finer, so it doesn't sort of look as chunky as the original Terrier did. I don't want to sound like I'm beating down on the original Terrier, it's not as good as this tooling, but I still really like the model. My only sort of real gripe with this loco is the fact that on the front of the cab, which I think is called the Spectre Plate, you can see the different holes where the different detail versions, like the for the A1X version, where all their pipes would lead. So yeah, I think that's my only real gripe with this model. It's a very smooth running and quiet motor, though it doesn't really have a flywheel, so that's a shame. But it's still very, very nice. Uh, about to say, I recommend this to everybody, but I think most modelers have probably already got a Terrier on their layout. But if you haven't got one, I think it is a very good investment. I paid £102 for my Terrier, plus £4 postage from Hattons. Yeah, I think that's a very good price, one of these. I know that sort of pre-grouping stock, a lot. I know that it's not the biggest sort of thing to model, and it's usually BR, because that's what people remember. But I think, honestly, it's a very good loco. I think there is a couple of these left on hands. There might not be now. But yeah, I think it is a really good loco. Now time for some running. <laughs> 